Hi my friend, I'm twin number three. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I'm going to share with you what I think is the real meaning of the Garden of Eden account in Genesis. I hope you'll find this to be exciting. If nothing else, then I hope by the end of it you'll say, oh yeah, that makes sense. People often say that the Bible is hard to read, hard to understand, and they're right for a variety of reasons. For one thing, the Garden of Eden account is an allegory. That means there's a superficial story, but the real meaning is a little bit deeper. Some things are just better said in poetry or in an allegory. There may be another aspect too. Why did Jesus talk in parables? He did not want everyone to understand what he was saying. That's possibly the case here as well. As you're about to see, the Eden account might get a PG rating now. There are things being said here that perhaps children should not understand the same way as adults. Unfortunately, most people now only know the children's version. All of these things I'm telling you about Genesis are based on very many years of unpaid research under fairly difficult circumstances. So if you choose to use something from here, please do cite the source. Partly that's for my protection, although I've copyrighted all of this, but mostly it's because I've only just begun to explain to you what Genesis means. A little bit of information is very easily misinterpreted. Wrong ideas can hurt people. I'd like to ask your help in another way too. I'm trying to get a great deal of information into just a 10 minute video. The book of Genesis relays several streams of information at one time. I've decided to follow that lead so the slides may not line up exactly with the narration. There's extra material in the slides. So I'd like to ask that you listen to the video and then maybe go back and look at the slides a second time. I'm sorry for that inconvenience, but that's the best that I could come up with now. And if you have ideas, please share them with me. I'd love to hear them. Okay, on to Genesis 3. Most people think that what happened in Eden is this. God made Adam and Eve, put them in a garden, told them not to eat an apple, and if they did, they would die. Well, of course, sooner or later, that commandment would be violated. The whole situation seems very arbitrary and a setup for a fail. Now the Garden of Eden account explains how suffering and death entered humanity. Those are very high stakes. So at best, God seems not very wise. Now in fact, there are quite a few things wrong with this popular view that I just outlined. For a full explanation, please see my earlier videos. I won't read through the whole text here because it's really way too long. But what I'm covering is the third chapter of Genesis. If you don't have a Bible, you can easily find a number of translations online. So what went wrong in the Garden of Eden? How did that lead to suffering and death for every one of us? Now please keep in mind that myths and allegories are true. They're not necessarily historically true, but they do relate an important truth. Also keep in mind that this did not necessarily happen on a dense material plane the kind of plane that we spend most of our time on. Also, while there is a talking snake in the Garden of Eden, there is no apple. That's something that's not in the Bible. It was made up later. And then finally, here's just a quick reminder. The first part of Genesis sets up two ways. They're called the way of death and the way of life due to their ultimate outcomes. The way of death is described in Genesis 1. It's the creation of the Elohim. Maybe the major mistake in translations is to say that Elohim means God. Elohim are creator spirits. These particular ones were very fragmented ones called male and female. They're obsessed with procreation, domination, control, all of the things that we find in a materialistic heterosexist society. The second way is made by YHVH Elohim. This is a complete name and this aspect of deity creates a complete person. Now there are two kinds of Elohim, fragmented and complete. Presumably in YHVH Elohim, the name there refers to complete ones. The complete person receives these directives. Take care of the garden, protect it, and avoid the tree of good and evil knowing. I'll explain in just a moment what that is. The complete person was called Ha'adam, the human, but Elohim fragmented out the woman. So that's where Genesis 3 begins. This is the first day of the woman's existence as a separate entity. The snake approaches the woman and hisses, Did perhaps Elohim say you may not partake of any trees in the garden? Now this is a trick question. 
Elohim said, partake of any trees that have seed in them. Remember, they're obsessed with procreation. YHVH said, don't partake of the tree of good and evil knowing. The woman is confused about this in her answer. She says, that Elohim says we may not partake of the tree in the middle of the garden. That's wrong. It was YHVH Elohim who said that. And she adds to this, you may not touch it. Now what is the sin in the Garden of Eden that leads to suffering and death? I believe the answer is procreative sex. And here is the evidence from the Hebrew text to support that belief. First of all, the snake is a symbol, a phallic symbol. That's easy enough to see, especially with this snake, which moves around upright before sex and is on its belly after sex. In addition, the expression, tree in the middle of the garden, is an idiom. In Hebrew and Aramaic, this means procreative sex. That's not too difficult to see either. Furthermore, when the woman says we may not touch it, the verb touch has sexual connotations in Hebrew. We have the same thing in English. You might imagine a president saying something like, I did not touch that woman. Then there's the verb to know in Hebrew. Very, very often this verb means to have sex with. That's where we get the expression to know in a biblical sense. So the snake counters the woman's objection by saying, you won't die. That part is false. The snake adds, you will be like the Elohim doing good and evil knowing. That part is true. The only thing we really know about Elohim so far is they are obsessed with procreation. The snake adds one more thing. Your eyes will be opened. Now the word eyes in Hebrew is ayin. That also means fountains or flow. So both meanings are true. The people will lose their innocence. And then fountains refers to reproductive fluids as I've indicated in the slide. So the two people partake of the tree. The immediate result of this is the conception of Cain. More evidence that this is a story about sex? The people make loincloths for themselves. So they were running around naked and innocent before. Now they cover up their genitalia. This is followed by the showdown with their maker, YHVH Elohim. The human blames the woman. The woman says, the snake seduced me. All in all, I think we have a very good case so far for this being a story about sex. But if there are any doubt, look at the punishments or curses or consequences of their actions. These are especially notable for the woman. They include pregnancy, labor pains. She will suffer when bringing forth children. Now the text said nothing about children before this. In addition, some women will feel desire for some men. And if your Bible says husband in verse 16, that's a false translation. The word is man. Finally, men will try to rule over women. The punishments for the man, he will have to work very hard to support the woman and the children, and then he dies. Now you may have noticed something. The author of Genesis, whether you think that's God or Moses or a committee of editors, thinks that these are the worst possible things that could happen to humans. And yet, if you're an American at least, you might notice that these are essentially equivalent to what we call family values. It's ironic that family values took over Christianity and Judaism for all practical purposes in the United States. Family values are anti-Bible, anti-God. If you read the Gospels for what Jesus says about sexuality, family values are the opposite. How did they pull the wool over our eyes? The Western Church, at least, used to know better. Please note the details in the slides. So what is the cause of suffering and death that each one of us faces? According to Genesis, it's violation of YHVH Elohim's direction to not partake of good and evil knowing, that is, of procreative sex. Isn't that amazing? How on earth can anyone say that the Bible is heterosexist or homophobic? So there you have it. I think the evidence is overwhelming that the sin of the Garden of Eden was procreative sex. Since YHVH is the Christian and Jewish God, that is something for these people to really think about. I think there are a few ways we can go wrong with this knowledge. Please look for a video I'm making about heterophobia. Nonetheless, I think it's really important that you have the truth about what Genesis says. My hope is that truth will set us all free from deadly lies. Thanks so much for listening and be blessed.